Hello dear friends, this is Yule Humphreys. I'm so glad to be with you again and share a few words with you about a 10 minute message from the Word of God. And I'd like to share a word with you today from the fact that we're to look to Jesus. Keep looking to Jesus for your help and your hope. And I hope that as I speak to Christians, I am encouraging those of you who believe in Jesus to keep looking to Him. For He said, look unto me, all the ends of the world, for I am God, and I am God that will save you. And so the Lord is our strength, <clears throat> and I hope that you'll do that. I'm here in my home in my study, and I share with you this word of the importance of keep looking to Jesus. I read in the scripture in Psalms, 46th Psalm, these words, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. You see, God is our refuge, a place of safety. He's your place of safety today. I want you to turn to Him and seek that place of refuge and quit worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow. Quit being depressed about what's happened yesterday or what's happened in the year that's gone. But look to God and know that He is there to help you now. He cares for you and He loves you and He wants to be your strength. The Lord is my our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters roar and be troubled, and the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Number one, we should we we're, we're, we're faced with troubles. All of us have troubles. There are kinds all kinds of troubles. There are troubles for the unsaved person, the person that's not a Christian. If you're, if you're listening to this and you're not a Christian, I can guarantee you have troubles and problems, but you have no one to go to to really help you with that problem, to really know how to solve it and give you peace. Because Jesus Christ the Lord waits to be gracious for you, you must turn to Him to find the answer and know the way out. The Bible teaches in 1 Peter, the fourth chapter, a word to you Christians that are suffering, a word to you that are having a hard time. The Bible says in the fourth chapter, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the trial that is by fire, which is to try you as though something strange is happening to you, but rejoice inasmuch as you are become partakers of Christ's suffering and that when His glory shall be revealed, you will be glad with exceeding great joy. And so you see, you're suffering with one that has suffered so for you. When on that cross He bore all your sins, and in His blood He gave His life for you, and rose again, and He's coming back to reward you as you bear your cross for Him. And so, praise God, we find that we're at there are all kinds of troubles. And then as I read, there are those geographical troubles, uh, like like uh, the mountains being carried in the midst of the sea and the waters roaring. And we've seen in the last year of 2012 some of the greatest acts of, uh, of God and nature that we've ever known. That, that terrible hurricane that hit uh, New Orleans uh, a few years ago uh, called Katrina, it just almost wiped out that whole great city. Oh, what a hurricane. Never in the record of America is ever a thing that's devastating. And yet these are things that are happening and Jesus said in the last days there will be earthquakes and storms and there will be hurricanes. Oh, there will be different kinds of tragedies. In New York, in the East Coast, there was a great storm and a hurricane. First time in the history of that part of the country that it had so hit that part of the nation. We're seeing that happen all over. We're seeing prairie fires out there in California that wiped out thousands of acres of, of, of uh, grass and, and even houses and homes. Oh, what a, what a great tragedy. Some of these things that are happening. And we read that though this happens, though this happens, God is our refuge and our strength. Even though the mountains be moved and the waters roar, we know we're safe in the hand of God and the Lord will take care of His own. The Lord will take care of His own. And we need to recognize <clears throat> that this is something that is very important. Over in Psalms, the 91st chapter, it says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I want you to know you're safe. 
even in time of trouble. There's geographical problems, there are emotional problems. I might be talking to someone whose family is disintegrating, or someone who is sick unto death, or someone who is facing a tragedy in his work, in his business, whatever it might be, whatever kind of trouble you're facing today. Let me tell you, dear Christian, that God loves you, and the Lord is standing by to help you, and He's going to bring you through. And if you're not a Christian, He's saying to you, believe in me, trust me now, and I'm going to help you get up out of the misery you're in, and put your feet on the solid rock, and I'll establish your goings, and I'll put a new song in your mouth, and you'll find a way out, and you'll find peace. This Bible says, I will say of the Lord, He's my refuge. He's my refuge, and He's, he's my God, and Him will I trust. He shall de deliver you from the snare of the fowler. You see, the devil comes against you, but the Lord delivers you from his snare and gives you peace and victory. He shall c comfort you with his f feathers and cover you with them, and under his wings you shall trust. I want you to learn that you're covered under the feathers of God and under His wings, you're safe. I want you to know whatever's happening in your life today, it's going to work out. And God's got an answer, and He's bringing you through. He's bringing you through the shadows to the sunlight. He's bringing you through the flood to the shore. He's bringing you through the darkness to the light that will not dim. God loves you. The Lord is with you, and God will help you. And so we need to see that this is true as we read the Word, the, the Holy Word of a loving God. As we read that Word, we understand something else. And that is that these troubles all are working uh, for us in the name of Jesus Christ, our beloved Lord. It means God is with us. He said, uh, I know that God is with me. God is with me. And that's so important to know that He's with you. If God be for you, who can be against you? The Bible says in, in Psalm 46 and 10, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I'll be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us, and the God of Jacob is our refuge. So the Lord is with you. Jesus is with us. He's the Son of God and is able to save. Over in Matthew, the first chapter, it says, And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Jesus means Savior. Jesus. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled of the prophet Isaiah, who had said, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and bring forth a son. A virgin, never been with a man, but she will have a miraculous birth. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is, God is with us. And so when you have Jesus, you have God with you. God is with us. That's what Emmanuel means. His name was called Emmanuel. And we need to see then. Be still and know that He is the Lord. And He's with you. And He's going to carry you through. He's going to bless you. He's going to give you strength that you don't have. He's going to hold you up. And He'll make you stronger. And He'll help you find a way that God will bless. Oh, the Lord of hosts is with us. And the God of Jacob is our refuge. I want you to believe that, dear friend, and trust the Lord to help you now, to find the answer to your needs, to find where you need to go, to help you with that decision you're trying to make. The Lord will help you and lead you. The Holy Spirit has come to guide you into all truth. He will guide you. He will speak to your heart. He will speak to your conscience, and you will feel, this is the thing I need to do. He will speak to the Word of God. Read your Bible. And then He speaks to you when you pray. And the words come out. And God will speak. And you will hear Him even as He hears you. Oh, praise God. May the Lord bless you, dear friend. May you know that God loves you. And may you know <clears throat> that many in the world love you. I know I love you. I've never met you, but I love you when you believe in Jesus. And if you don't believe in Jesus, I love you too. Because you see, the Lord loves us all. And when we have our heart filled with the Spirit of God and of Christ, we love all kinds of people. We love them all. We want to bring them in the kingdom before it's too late. Because the Bible says that if we don't get in before it's too late, 
and we'll miss heaven and we're on our way to hell. And that's something that God has not desired for you. Oh, my dear friends, look to Jesus and you will be saved from a devil's hell. Look to Jesus and he'll forgive you of every sin. Call on the name of the Lord and he'll help you find that peace, that peace that passes knowledge and give you hope and help. And then you can say with the psalmist, the Lord of hosts is with us and the God of Jacob is our refuge. Amen. Pray this prayer. Say, Dear Jesus, Dear God, please forgive me. I believe in Jesus. I believe He died for me. I believe He rose again. I believe He's coming back. Come in my heart and help me live for You as the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, Amen. God bless you. Pray that prayer and live forever. God bless you, my dear friend. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen.